Hello, everybody. My name is Maureen Hahn. I am the President and CEO of the Canadian Council on Rehabilitation and Work, and it's my pleasure to be with you here with you today. COVID-19 has disrupted life as we know it, and an often identified silver lining has been the proliferation of work from home, or telework as I'm going to call it, within Canadian industries. Businesses have had to pivot with little preparation time to develop temporary or permanent uh, telework opportunities. Um, and the telework picture that is painted by mainstream society is a rosy one. Working from home increases flexibility, uh, decreases commute time and associated costs, which leads to greater enjoyment and one would assume greater employee productivity. However, this chain of logic assumes that all employees can effectively work from home and that those employees have access to proper home-based workspaces. In fact, people with disabilities often work in industries with low telework cap uh, capacity or do not have sustainable work from home alternatives. I want to dive into this a little bit more so that we can understand the reality of the current situation of employment for persons with disabilities. From January to the end of May of this year, almost 300,000 workers with disabilities lost their job due to COVID-19. This is almost twice the rate of those without disabilities. In many cases, telework is simply not an option for employees with disabilities. Just over half, over 53%, work in an industry that has less than a 30% opportunity of working from home. Those industries are the retail trade, healthcare and social services, manufacturing, construction, transportation and warehousing, and accommodation and food services. So when telework opportunities do exist when these, in these sectors, and remember it's only about three in 10 jobs, um, they're often only for management or white collar roles. And the stat for people with disabilities in white collar roles, 10%. So given the current reality of where workers with disabilities are working and the positions they hold, telework opportunities are truly not really a viable option. One byproduct of the office environment is its social side that promotes teamwork and collaboration. We all know that. By contrast, working from home may be socially isolating. And this may be more pronounced in groups that already face barriers to social participation, such as people with disabilities. A few years ago at a youth program that I attended in Nova Scotia, I was told by one of the participants that he went to a movie with a fellow participant the night before. Um, of note, this 20 something person had never been to a movie with a friend before. Um, and this friendship of course would never have occurred without that social interaction. And the obvious isolation was remarkable. Social isolation is quite common for people, for people with disabilities as 21% report living alone. People with severe disabilities are three times more likely to be living at home than people without disabilities. And furthermore, there was a study, an Angus Reid Institute study on social isolation that found that nearly four in 10 of those with a physical disability are among the most isolated in our society, the truly desolate. So how can one truly expect then people with disabilities to participate in the workforce, including the social aspects of work if telework is the only option? Telework is largely, largely predicated on the internet and can be a fantastic option for those who can productively work from home. However, one in five people with a disability do not use the internet, meaning that once again, telework may not be a true alternative. Prior to the pandemic of workers with disabilities, um, more than a third required at least one workplace accommodation to be successful at work. However, employees may, may simply not have the proper setup uh, to ensure an accessible home-based workplace. So, and I challenge you as, as listeners to think about how and where you've worked from home over the last seven months. And I would bet that the majority of these makeshift setups did not include uh, uh, um, proper ergonomic furniture, noise canceling headphones, big screen monitors, voice recognition software, and a fast high speed internet that was reliable. Though these are accommodations that are typically provided to employees with disabilities in the workplace, but rarely provided to a home-based office. 
And in order to see successful outcomes, it's essential for employers to continue to accommodate employees with disabilities and ensure that their needs are being met during this time of telework. So in short, telework is a wonderful option for some, but not all. It is important to consider the specific and unique circumstances of each employee and their place of work to ensure an optimal level of productivity and engagement. Thank you very much.